Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Cicerino back to talk about the Amazing Race episode 8 here of season 35 as our teams raced through Slovenia on an exciting episode of the Amazing Race. Excited to talk about it here with our Amazing Race panel. First here, uh, back to talk about the first ever teams running through Slovenia. It's our chief Amazing Race correspondent, Jessica Lees. Jess, how are you? I'm great, Rob. I'm ready to pack up and move to Slovenia. It looked very nice. This was a nice commercial for Slovenia. Yeah, I don't know if they if they kicked something in to get that good press coverage, but um, I wouldn't put it past them. I know Amazing Race Canada has done yeah. that in the past, but however we got it, I'm happy we had it because you know it was it was great. Slovenia is just really coming into its own. It's just 32 years old. You know, it's really like a, you know, a nice age for a country. You know, when I was 32 years old, I definitely didn't have that much going for me. <laughs> Peaking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, here with us, uh, a man who looks like he is uh, about to head to the iciest parts of Slovenia. It is a bundled up Mike Bloom. Hello. I'm ready to pack up and move to Slovenia. Oh, wait, sorry, that intro line was taken. And I just walked up a thousand flights of stairs. Well, this is awkward. Can I zip line down now? You can unzip that jacket. I'm worried that you're going to pass out before if the end of this podcast. If I beast mode cowboy myself, that's just the amazing race, you know? Yeah. I don't want to know what's under the jacket, Rob. Yeah. I mean, if you're listening to the podcast, Mike Bloom is wearing like a Bowie Jane parka right now. Uh, it's just also... called a parka. It doesn't even call the Bowie Jane parka. Not everything is a Bowie also... Jane something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you joined like, them? Now, I guess we, I was just saying, I haven't joined the, the mafia. Now, I guess the other thing is that, Rob, you brought up last week that Robin and Chelsea were, in your opinion, the Bowie Jane of the Amazing Race. Has they that never. changed? They can never. <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm just worried that Mike is going to pass out before the end. Like, he's going to be, like, uh, looking for that bottle of water, like Joel and Garrett. Like, oh, I was, just, I was just holding the water. It made me feel refreshed. I'm fine right now. Just don't make me climb an exorbitant amount of stairs, considering that I guess this this leg seemed to be sponsored by both the, you know, Travel Tourism Board of Slovenia and also Stairmaster, mm -hmm. because all it was was climbing stairs and going to such great heights the entire leg. Yeah. Okay. Lots of stairs here in this leg of the Amazing Race. Actually, it, it was leg day on the Amazing Race, some could <laughs> say, as uh, we saw the teams uh, going through uh, many different battles and races up and down the stairs. My biggest thing, though, that this episode, and of course, we'll have our exit interview with Morgan and Lena, but I, I really felt like that the edit was pointing to, like, oh, there's an elevator. Oops. Uh, you're you go. You're supposed to go by foot not on the elevator and we really i felt like we're really hanging a lampshade on it and then we see steve and anna lee take the elevator and go to the mat and i felt like ah that's it jess it was fine yeah well they took the stairs up correct yeah and then they took the elevator down there's nothing in there about how you have to go downstairs. Like going downstairs was a non-factor <laughs> at every point of this leg of the race. Yes. Is the elevator the zip line of the circular staircase? It's the it, world's slowest <laughs> zip line, yeah. although it is a lot steeper. It'd be like a zip line if like there was someone in front of you who's like, no, I got to stop halfway through. So mm -hmm. uh, can we get then there's someone who's like, can you hold the zip line, please? I need to get on right now. Let me just say. Good God, this season is cooking with gas at mm -hmm. this point. I loved this episode because what happened to Steve and Anna Lee, I feel like it's something we rarely see on The Amazing Race. Jess, I don't know about you, but I had, talk about like deep pull flashbacks. Uh, the final five of The Amazing Race 4, they went to, I think it was Malaysia. And there was a team, a couple by the name of Kelly and John, who in the middle of a leg, Went for a fast forward, much like Annalie and Steve did for the express pass that was already taken. And they were dead to rights. It's like, okay, there's no way they can catch up now. They just missed out on a huge opportunity. But lo and behold, we have a team that gets incredibly lost. Uh, in that case, it was the dating 12 years slash virgins, Chuck and Millie, <laughs> had gone so lost that Kelly and John caught up to them, passed them on the roadblock, and somehow escape the fate that was set into them when they missed that fast forward. 
you know, comparing this to last week is so interesting because we see Andrea and Milena make mistake after mistake, getting lost, making a huge costly error, and just get completely out of it halfway through the episode. I totally thought we were going in the exact same direction here with Steve and Anna Lee. Their glider took a nosedive, but they pulled up at just the last <laughs> second to survive elimination. Well, this is interesting in contrast with last week, Mike, because yeah. I think one of the chief complaints that people had about last week's leg was that we knew who was going home the entire time. And there was no chance that they were going to pull it out at the last minute. But I think this week underlines there is always a chance. And you always have to, you always have to keep that positive attitude. And I would say, if, as long as we're continuing to contrast these two, Steve and Annalie were kind of a hard watch this week mm -hmm. because they really, Annalie especially, didn't approach it the same way that we saw, like for example, Joel and Garrett last week, who knew they were out the whole time, were absolutely certain of it. But they just kept doing the tasks and soldiered on and kept a good attitude about it. And they're like, we're here for the experience. And Annalie, the entire episode is just like, well, we're out. It doesn't matter. Why yeah. bother? Well, if I could maybe like uh, give the counterpoint, like I felt like that they were a little it was a little bit of an arc. I felt like for Steve and Annalie, where I felt like that they did kind of like touch rock bottom, which ironically came at the top of the stairs when they realized <laughs> that they had gone after the express pass and that it had already been taken. Uh, and then I feel like that they kind of gave you that the like the zip line was a little bit of like the like cleansing of like, OK, now let's just like we're we're going to be eliminated. Let's just enjoy it. And then, you know, uh, they did like start to I, I felt like have a little bit of a of a shift following the zip line. And then they went through the beehive task and then ultimately did that pretty quick. And then Annalie was pushing Steve to, uh, you know, get up the stairs quicker when they realized that they still had a shot at it. Yeah, yeah, there was a redemption arc for yeah. sure. Yeah. It it felt like we went from zero to defeatist pretty like zero right. to negative a hundred. That's pretty quick. It's like mm -hmm. you're at the beginning of the leg, you screwed up on one thing. There are other teams still here. That's not the time to say you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, is that I, I think last week, uh, I don't want to say like am I team Annalie or team Steve, but I think the way that like Steve was approaching their dynamic, I think I was more team Steve last week with the way he was talking. I was to team Annalie, I should say, with the way he was talking to her. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did switch to team Steve this week. Maybe that's why it was in the brain. Because I've had a good week. Yeah, because yeah. and I and I understand Annalie's perspective. I am someone due to my own mental health proclivities, like I tend to catastrophize when something goes wrong. But I think this week shows that you cannot be that glass half empty person on a show like The Amazing Race, uh, just because it's going to really destroy your team. And I feel like this week, you know, the way Steve approached her had still a little bit of that stiff upper lip uh, potential to it. But I do feel like we got to see a bit more of like the doom and gloom Anna Lee that she talked about in one of their talking heads this week of really the more loss they got, the more she was set on like, Let's just have Phil eliminate us carnival style right here, right now, because there's no way we're coming back from this. Yeah. I really enjoyed this episode a ton also. that I felt like that the Express Pass, I don't know if it was just the, the design of getting the Express Pass really added a lot to the episode. But the fact that, you know, we had um, a, multiple teams like missing the, like you said, you had Todd and Ashley, they missed the entrance to it, which gave Rob and Corey the chance to get to it first. So Rob and Corey start heading up the stairs and then we have like a chase. And this was like something out of like Indiana Jones of like, <laughs> first like Todd and Ashley are like, all right, let's go where let's get them. Let's go up the stairs. Let's do it. And so yeah, that, <laughs> that, and then Todd and Ashley decide, you know what? Fine. We're not going to go after the express pass, but now here comes Greg and John and Todd's like, yeah, you got, you can catch him. You can. so to like Todd like and pushes them to go do it, and then Greg and John go chasing Rob and Corey up the stairs, and Rob and Corey are panicked uh, because they feel like uh, they even admit like Greg and John like if they knew how many more stairs there were, they would have passed them. Uh, I, I thought that this was so exciting. Yeah, and it just goes to show that again, the perfect design for the express pass, as Jess has talked about before, is like give them something that they need to go out of their way to do 
Don't make it like, oh, here's something you can randomly find in a task. Like, make it a risk-reward situation. And here, the risk was presented in so many ways. First, the risk in general that we saw across many ways of walk up all these stairs to take time yeah. out of it. As Corey talked about, like, it's much better to not finish in first than to get this, you know, express pass at the top. But then also the risk reward of like, okay, are we about to go climb basically 1200 stairs for the chance that we might get beat by these people anyway. And so it's like yeah. a sunk cost almost of like, how long do we go before we have to turn back and, and, you know, hightail it back to the Nordic center. Yeah. And this was before that we even got to Steven and Lee mistakenly thinking that they could get the express pass and they go and try to make the gambit to like, Hey, we're so far out of it. The only thing that can save us is the express pass. And they miss seeing that the express pass is closed. I have a controversial take on this, by the way. Yes. Ooh. I do not think there should have been a sign at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, In this oh case, I, it I was thought moot. you were going to say, you know what? Rope it off. Like, don't let I mean, we, we did no. see a pretty hastily scotch taped up taken sign <laughs> next to it. Maybe they're just like, oh, they really love that movie here in Slovenia. I love <laughs> Liam Neeson, too. All right, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, I, it was I, set in Europe, I think. Yeah. No signs. You got to find out for yourself. But <laughs> also, if you're that far behind, you have to assume it's like the old school fast forwards. You have to assume someone else already went for it. Yeah, there's no bystander effect here where it's like, well, if all other teams thought that all other teams went for it, then nobody's going to go for it. Like, yeah, knowing that you are so far behind as you think you are, you have to bet that. All of, if at least one of the remaining six teams went for it and probably got it over you. The thing that I was really worried about when Steve and Annalie were headed up the stairs was like, oh, and I bet they're not going to let them do the zip line either because it's closed. <laughs> but no, thank goodness they let them zip line down. They didn't make them like walk back down the stairs. Or well, I thought there'd be just like nobody there. <laughs> like, oh, I guess it's gone. Yeah, I think there would be like a, a placard, right? That just mm -hmm. says like Express Pass Taken. Express yeah. Pass Closed. I mean, I'll be completely honest. I would not be surprised if that was an audible called by production. If they just felt bad and they're like, all right, just give them the zip line. Like, I don't think they expected multiple teams to do this. Uh, and if so, it was like a foot race. And so it would be done almost instantaneously. So they're like, yeah, I guess while you're here, you might as well get it done. And yeah, it turns out it's the shot in the arm that the two of them needed to mm -hmm. barely squeak it out. Again, this is unbelievable. <laughs> to me that they made so many mistakes including climbing over a thousand stairs to get an express pass that wasn't there yet they still did it self-driving man just an incredible thing in the amazing race question if every team made it to the top would every team have been allowed to zip line hmm so like you you see rob and cory up there you're greg and john you decide to keep going up anyway could you get a free zip line out of it? I'm sure. It seems like these uh, people of Slovenia seem very charitable, very nice. They will, you know, ask a father and daughter who have pulled over no less than a dozen times how yeah. to get to the airfield. It seems like they'd be very receptive to, yeah, sure, have them go down. Maybe if they run into zip lines, could they alpine ski down? I know the snow wasn't on the ground, but it seemed like those people were doing it just on the grass. I had some questions about the mechanism of how do you get the zip line thing back up to the top of the zip line? Do they have like a, it's multi a pulley? Yeah. Have pulley. you been zip lining before, Rob? I have not. Mm. I'd like to. I'd it's like fun. To. Yeah. I'm surprised that wasn't part of your Survivor All Stars uh, pre jury trip. That feels very like jungle <laughs> canopy. Well, that's like an amazing race reward, right? Like you'll zip line through the canopies of Colombia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, sorry. We, we, we didn't do any uh, zip lining. Uh, but maybe one, maybe one of these days uh, we'll get to do some. But um, yeah, it was like, uh, how long does it take to reset the zip line? Um, a couple minutes. Well, that's mm. a longer zip line than ones I've been on. But like the ones that I was on, you just like they wound it back and it and the thing came back to them. It only yeah, so zips it, one way. It's the world's steepest zip line, according to Phil. And wasn't it like the uh, the second highest ski jump in the world? So, yeah, it actually might have been a bit more risk and reward as well of like, not only did you climb all these stairs to get there. Now you have to wait for the zip line to come back, which would put you even further behind. Yeah, we're going to we're going to take a tour of every superlative in Slovenia. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't doing don't shoot week? your. Yeah, I was gonna say don't shoot your wad. Amazing race. I'm pretty sure we're staying in Slovenia for the next leg. So okay, okay. first time there. All right. Uh, this episode also featured a gambit from teams uh, mm -hmm. booking their own travel on the trains, and it seemed like there was like a very like complicated 
a plan that a bunch of the teams tried to do to, to like cut it by like the minute to get an eight hour head start. And I'm sure the amazing race producers were thrilled that this <laughs> did not work out for the oh, team. This is, this is old school, amazing race. Yeah. This is classic. Like they, they did this kind of stuff in the early days all the time. And I, I was so thrilled. Like I, I, I never thought I'd say this because I got used to not having the travel drama. I got used to the amazing plane. I got used to all of that. And now we have it back. We have the old stuff back. And it's just a joy to see teams like walk into a travel agency and do this like petty travel. Yeah. They do this like Baroque negotiation with the local travel agent to find that one flight. And they're like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to take a gamble. We'll see if it pays off. And then this whole thing with the trains was wild. Yeah. And I, I love that they realized it and got off and went back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was nervous about was like, you know, I guess as Corey expressed, it was express past, you know, it wasn't like, okay, if we miss this, then were incredibly far behind. That would have been a massive risk that honestly, I would be surprised that they had taken. Uh, Hero was, okay, worst comes to worst. We just hightail it back to Vienna and take the train the same as everybody else. But I thought it was really interesting. Even more so something that I miss dearly, just to your point, absolutely makes the heart grow fonder, the standby list for planes. Mm -hmm. uh, I miss that dearly. That again was a pastiche of old school, amazing race was teams some were getting on the earlier flights. Some put themselves on the standby list. And there was always drama as to like, okay, who would get on? Who wouldn't get on? And I don't know, Robin and Chelsea, I don't know if they gave the travel agent the stink eye or if they just didn't ask the right question to get on the standby list because Todd and Ashley and Robin Corey did. And had that train transfer work out, that could have got them a top three finish. Well, yeah, poor Robin and Chelsea. Nobody wants this... to help them ever. Yeah. I don't know if it's that they don't want to help them. I think you're right, Mike. They didn't know to ask the right questions because the two teams that did ask these questions and get on this list are teams that are very clearly super fans. Mm -hmm. Like you see Todd doing this like emergent strategy with everything he does. And obviously he's going to know. And Rob and Corey, they're, they're clearly they've been watching this like all of Corey's life. They've seen people pull this before i don't know that robin and chelsea are, a, are as deep into amazing race lore so i my guess is that it didn't even occur to them like they asked when is the earliest flight they were told seven o'clock i find it shocking that a flight was able to open up eight seats on standby yeah that was mm -hmm. pretty crazy yeah, I mean, maybe productions like, listen, I'll give you this many euros if you skip this flight. Just uh, want to make it a TV show here. We want to make some drama. We don't want Greg and John to get win their third leg in a row. Oops, they do. Yeah, you <laughs> don't want you don't want one team eight hours ahead of everybody. But if you have three teams eight hours ahead of everybody, at least that's like you can still make a D minus amazing race episode out of that. Yeah, people jockeying for first place, and then you have the back of the pack uh, coming through. All right, so we have uh, our first ever leg of the Amazing Race in Slovenia. It's not where Dracula is from, <laughs> or it's Ivan not, the I, Impaler. Yeah, th this was the wildest. This is the wildest twisting of literature since the Emily Dickinson conversation in Big Brother this summer. <laughs> Wow, cool. who would have thought Jess would be the first up to bring up Cameron on an mm -hmm. RHAP podcast between the three of us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is Dracula not based on Ivan the Impaler? Um, he is not based on Ivan the Impaler, and he's not from Slovenia. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also it's Vlad the Impaler, and it's and they Ivan did the a, Terrible. Yes. <laughs> they did a whole episode around Dracula in season 14, 13, 14, Ooh. Mike. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Was that the one where they had to drink blood for like a task? Or oh my no, God. that was that was season six. They had to drink blood. Oh, right. That was the gross, the gross food task. Yeah, yeah. Drinking blood. They had like a whole thing where they'd like smash a mirror or something and like get a steak and like stab Spooky. something with it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that was in Romania. And that was there was a team that was 14 hours behind in that one, mm -hmm. as I recall. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, teams are going to be heading to uh, Slovenia, uh, which uh, we're going to find out uh, was founded in 1991 um, that our teams uh, ultimately after the gambit to take the trains ultimately doesn't work. Everybody is basically like all on the same train headed to Slovenia, which sets off uh, a 
race to then uh, head to the first clue box. And Jess, we've got our driving and we're uh, doing stick shift for the first time this season. That's always exciting. That used to be like, there used to be not an option. Yeah. But now I'm, it's back. We're excited to see that. I thought this task was great for the way that it rewarded those of us who are old. <laughs> In what ways? Well, Mike Bloom, do you remember when Slovenia became an independent country? I mean, I was two years old when it happened. Exactly. So no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I remember it. Yeah. Because I, I was in yeah. middle school. We were studying Europe and social studies. We had to keep changing the map. Yeah. I don't specifically remember when Slovenia was. If I wow. Are you, you're what, the only Rob then that doesn't study NATO history. I apparently. don't study NATO history. Uh, I guess if I if I had to know when did Yugoslavia end, I think I would have come up with uh, 1990. I wouldn't have said 1199. <laughs> you would, yeah. You you would have. If given those numbers, you could have pulled 1991. I, yeah, I think it would probably be between 1991. I could see 1919 as yeah. a viable option, but. Uh, not 1976 for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, we were celebrating our bicentennial <laughs> and Slovenia was celebrating its birth. Yeah, it's not independent yet. It's going to be independent in 9119. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't, well, I didn't even realize, like, they didn't point out to us the hack that Garrett did, right? Unless he, like, completely took a shot in the dark of the arrow in the random kayak in the middle of the lake. Yeah. What? I, I maybe that was accidental. I don't know. I think that they did not want these teams having to do this multiple and multiple <laughs> times. Like I think that they felt like, you know, there's only one glider. Like uh maybe if one one person gets it wrong, that's fine. But if we had seven teams like having to do this over and over and over again, like this is gonna be a very long day for production. And I did love that it served as the marker of like Annalie's downward spiral that she just looks up in the sky, she's like, That's it, that's the teams, we're done. It's done for. They're doing that right now. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. that each leg does not have enough tasks in it, but there's a lot of race after the first task. So she needs mm -hmm. to calm herself a little bit. When you get yeah. to the point where you've been driving for hours, you haven't seen anybody, you get to a task and there's nobody there. That's when you can start to feel defeatist. Yeah. I thought that was pretty astute, though, of her that she mm. saw like these like uh, planes, like putting gliders up into the air. I guess they, they knew they were going to an airfield. But true, it, yeah. yeah, she's like, that's the, the other teams. And look at them. Like, we're falling so far behind. It's over. And I got one of those things where you get the roadblock and it's like, you know, there's a roadblock coming up and it says, like, go to Adventure Park mm -hmm. Jump. You know what the roadblock's going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, which was very fun again in uh, Amazing Race 33, right? When like they immediately at the pit start open the clue and it was the roadblock. And it's like, okay, Kim Holderness is going to do this. Great. Jump off the Verrazano Bridge. And she's like, oh, fantastic. Let me sit in a car for an hour of agony. I mean, what I, I really uh, enjoyed about this as well was we experienced, you know, a similarly sponsored entire leg of the race last season in Iceland. This felt a lot less on rails. And maybe it's because, again, we've been to Iceland before. We haven't been to Slovenia before. But I think what Phil pointed out in his initial introduction of the country was well met from my perspective. I think it did a good job of highlighting the country, you know, going through some things that you could do, but not in a way that made it feel like an hour, hour and a half long package for the country. And also not in a way that made the teams feel like they were basically going down a straight line of things you can do in this particular area line. of the country. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, with one glaring exception, all of these things are things that would be fun to do if you visited the country. <laughs> yes. This uh, is a very fun leg. A fun uh Expedia inspired experience for sure. Um so the teams are going to be going through the uh going up on the plane going in the glider uh, going through it. Uh we see Joel and Garrett actually get there first, but Smythe aka Garrett <laughs> uh he is going to be the first to uh go and also first to guess wrong when he guesses uh 1199 the year Slovenia was founded. Yeah, so I think the only two to seemingly get it wrong on the first try were him and Lena, right? Mm -hmm. And Lena just failed the eye test, which is understandable. Like, we talked about this, I think, with the uh, telescoping binocular back in <laughs> India. Yep. Like, if you have trouble seeing that far down, you're kind of screwed at that point. <sighs> 
Yeah, I also wonder, we saw her saying that she was feeling nauseous. I'm sure uh, we'll talk about this when we uh, get to the exit interview, if it's a thing. But I, I wonder also if she was sort of like, just like, all right, I, get me out of this plane. Yeah, it's possible that if you're, if you're not, if if that kind of motion bothers you, you're going to be a little distracted from what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. also, yeah, also, if you don't know the old uh, trope of like, you know, if it has a line at the bottom, that's a six. If it has a line, you know, the but it's always the bottom no matter what. And so I thought like, it was a okay. cross out. <laughs> it could be uh, exactly. Well, we'll see exactly uh, mm. what the succession of the other <laughs> sisters were not. They were bickering probably as much as the the Roy's siblings <laughs> were. But uh, this idea of like, okay, is it a six or is it a nine? If you knew that sort of again, like elementary school parlance as to what looks like what from what angle, then you could easily figure out it was one nine, one nine, and then just arrange it however you think historically and logically. But where'd the seven it. come from? I think she the one was the seven. <laughs> yeah, just an, a long tail on that one. Yeah. I have yeah. to I have to give a shout out to to Morgan as well, like being a very good big sister in this moment, like even. Like while she's waiting for the roadblock to be over, the way she talked to Anna Lee, I thought was really sweet mm -hmm. and supportive. And they they kind of they ran off. They're like, you know, it's gonna be fine. You got this. And yeah, it, especially in light of the fact that they end up losing to Steve and Anna Lee, it's like that's very gracious of them. Maybe mm -hmm. they should have gotten in her head more in retrospect. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to come back. There's a lot of numbers up there. I mean, that was interesting. I think in retrospect, we maybe should have seen Stephen and Annalie surviving coming because not only did we have that, but we also had the Joel and Garrett thing, right? Where Annalie's like, well, I guess this is goodbye. Y'all are like, no, no, we'll be right back actually to get our notebook. Then it will be goodbye. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know we're not there yet, but I really thought that like, oh, wow, Joel and Garrett are going to come in last place. Like, it's like, yeah, we will see you again <laughs> when you are at the mat getting eliminated. Uh, I, I really did think that that was going to be them who uh, were the last to arrive. But no, they made, they made it through. Um, ultimately, yeah, we talked a little bit about Anna Lee and the negative self-talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she was really like, um, you know, having big feelings, as we might say. Uh, Steve eventually had to say like, all right, simmer down. <laughs> simmer down now. <laughs> well, there's a point where they switch drivers. <laughs> and I feel like we missed a long conversation before that. <laughs> yeah i'm sure that it's just like get in the back seat and let me drive in a manner of speaking because annalee's like uh god we suck we're so stupid it seems like hey come on uh and i also it's, it's an interesting strategy of okay how do you pick the roadblock partner and annalee's like if i just do it i'm gonna be upset the whole time so you are much of a sunnier side person dad you enjoy yeah. this experience see i kind of thought that steve was going to get the todd of like hey you're too big and tall for this glider you can't do it but i guess uh steve came in underneath the weight requirements he's not that big and tall it's just that Annalie Annalie is, is very, very small <laughs> and ashley is very tall yes so todd does not look huge todd relative was to bummed ashley. out yeah. Todd was like, damn it. I wanted to do that. I think Todd is probably the most energetic person left on the race. Mm -hmm. He, his enthusiasm for it, like you could tell how much he loves this game. And I, I feel like we see them do such interesting strategic things every week that mm -hmm. are really kind of getting unsung. Mm hmm. What did the, uh, they do this week, Jess, that made you um, feel that way? This week, the realization that they can't get the Express Pass, yeah. but then talking John and Greg into going for the Express Pass so they could then try to pass them, yeah. that was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was that was super smart. Like it's that subtle bit of deviousness. It's not on the Boston Rob meat block scale of sabotage, but it is nice to see them kind of like nudge teams in that direction and also get like a little bit of restitution as well again it wasn't that first place victory like it was foreshadowed throughout the leg but like when it's robin and chelsea you know making hay while the sunshine's being like well todd and ashley are gonna struggle at this she cannot break a nail doing all this hard farm work mm -hmm. and like they blaze past them it was a really interesting yeah. like them also i think the most argumentative we have seen the two of them be considering how much they were like low-key blaming each other 
it looks like <laughs> for missing for, the, for uh, missing the pass. yeah and that's also again a really fun hallmark of the amazing race right is like the the zoom in you know the hand shaky cam zoom in on the obvious clue that the team's miss as they yeah. walk right by it it can't mm -hmm. be here it's got to be over here behind these dumpsters <laughs> <laughs> yeah they went off and then you know it was great when rob and Corey uh snuck through and then got the head start on them and then todd and ashley debating whether or not they could do it uh and then todd asked ashley do you like so what do you think you could do she's like uh i think so he's like oh that's a no that's a no but then they go and do it anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> It was great. I, I loved that whole that whole sequence uh, with the staircase. Um, going back to Todd and Ashley, yeah, why were Robin and Chelsea so shady about Ashley? About how like, oh, they're gonna switch detours. Ashley is not gonna be able to do this manual labor. These are always shady. <laughs> yeah, that's their mo. And I guess like we talked about maybe the one sided edit, but they didn't season. hear them, right? no i don't believe so yeah. uh, but i think we've seen things a bit one-sided where like ashley has certainly made and ashley and todd have made comments about like robin and chelsea not wanting to work with them i guess it's a bit of a two-way street uh now that we're seeing them we've seen certainly them talk about like how they don't need to make friends with the other teams but i feel like we haven't really heard them talk crap about the other teams in a capacity mm -hmm. that they did this week and i love it because again they immediately get their just desserts when todd and ashley pass them on this task yeah Okay, well, the teams are going to then uh, head on to go to the cross-country uh, skiing to get their detour. And this was just like a fun thing that they had to do that like just like the clue, but the detour is at the top of the cross-country skiing course. And so just do some cross-country skiing in shorts. AKA just fall flat on your face for like a dozen times and have it be filmed in a comical montage for all of America to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun, fun Pratt falls. Um, was anybody, especially a standout at the cross country skiing? You could tell who had done it before and who had mm -hmm. not. Well, if you ask Morgan, Lena should have been able to know how to do it. Despite the fact that she hasn't done it in 15 years. <laughs> yeah. And, but the question was, you know, cross country skiing and downhill skiing, two very different skill sets. Mm -hmm. Like with downhill skiing, you kind of, you don't have to create your momentum quite as much. Mm -hmm. And this was like, I think they were literally going up a hill mm -hmm. and nothing you learn. Parking from, garage. Yes. <laughs> nothing you learn from going up a hill, going down a hill is going to help you go up a hill. Mm -hmm. Like you see, you see Ashley going like parallel to the hill and like making little baby steps. And that's yeah. like one of the first things they teach you in cross country skiing is how to get up a hill using those little sideways baby steps. Okay. Well, the teams then got to a detour, which was going to be field work or housework. Uh, field work was going to be assembling walls of hay, whereas housework was going to be working on what will ultimately be homes for bees. Where are the bees, Jake? <laughs> Deep pull. <laughs> Where are the bees, Jake? Steven Anna Lee left saying, let's make a brand new start at the end of this leg. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. Uh, this is definitely more of a physical mental split than I think we've seen in a while. And like mental also in terms of like detail orientedness. And it's interesting because I feel like the housework was not a huge swerve, but I think like a tiny bit of a curve with, okay, they probably think it's some sort of construction task when no, as they talk about, there's no nails to put together. It really just seems more like a puzzle than anything. Mm -hmm. It was an Ikea beehive. Yeah, there wasn't even really a correct solution to it. <laughs> like I, I, I struggled to understand how you could have gotten that one wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, Steve and Annalie got it on the first try. They should have actually had them like unleash the bees. And if the bees <laughs> escape through the house, then you failed the task. Yeah. You have to go back and do it again. Did you have to match the painting? Uh, did it have to be painted a certain way? Yeah. Yeah, I think that you had to resemble the final piece of work, including like painting the various drawers, which I don't know if that's like the bees decision. You know, when a child's like, I want to paint my room blue. Did the bees decide, okay, I want this one to be red and to have like the picture of the little Dutch boy on it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's like a certain pattern that appeals to the bees, makes them the most productive. Uh, but we really only ended up seeing where um, it was Joel and Garrett and then ultimately Steve and Annalie that were working on this task. Correct? Nobody else did this one? Nobody else did this one. Yeah. It looked a lot. 
it looked a lot easier. I don't know why more people didn't go to it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about speaking of strategy, Greg and John's choice here, because they were initially on their way to do it. And then they think, OK, they're trying to big brain it. Of we have, If we have a chance at first, let's keep Todd and Ashley within our sights because they're more physical. They'll take the more physical tasks. And then we stand a chance of lapping them at the end, which lo and behold, they end up doing. But it was a it was a weird methodology to think through. Well, mm -hmm. there's a bit of like having that awareness that there are other teams there. There's something to be said for that, because I think you could. It's not even as as much like being able to lap them as it is like just knowing where you are in the race. Because if they go off to this other one and it turns out to be way, way harder and every other team does the hay, then they're in danger. And I think there's some comfort in knowing you're not in danger. But I, I really question their choice to do this one when it turns out that they are that allergic to the hay. Yeah, <laughs> well, they didn't know. <laughs> I haven't thought of a detour option in a long time that has been like this <laughs> health obtrusive. Uh, you know, even Rob and Corey had to like pull over and pop a Benny. Like these people <laughs> were doing very badly, which makes sense. They're not around hay a lot. So I legitimately thought like someone might have an allergy attack and be able to get like medevac before the pit stop or something. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is this is not on. I like I, I would not go anywhere near something that had to do with hay. And, you know, I, I, the second I started sneezing, I would be going a wall from the hay wall. That's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not hay, okay. <laughs> hay and the amazing race do not mix. No, we know that from seasons past. Yeah. No, it seems like a lot of the players had a lot of issues with the hay. This was no joke. Yeah, it was. Maybe it, the one part of the episode that was not sponsored by an Expedia inspired experience. Yeah. I don't need to go to Slovenia to do this. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm going to skip that on the, the amazing tour. race is sponsored by Claritin. Don't go to Slovenia <laughs> without taking your Claritin. It's interesting though, that uh, I'm trying to remember. I mean, obviously with survivor, it's more of a question as to like what medications are allowed on the show or not. I didn't realize you could just like loosely carry Benadryl around in your backpack. I didn't realize that past protocols for the amazing race. Oh, Amazing Race is a lot less stringent on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you can bring any kind of toiletries you want. Mm -hmm. um, I think they probably frown upon, like, no-dos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but no or, or, or sleeping yeah. pills as well, I would imagine. Uh, the exact opposite. Because I would imagine, like, they want people to, like, be sleep-deprived during those flights. They used to be able to. Mm. They used to be able to bring, like, over-the-counter sleep aids for the flights. Hmm. Okay. Um, I think there was a point at which that rule was changed, but I know I've heard yeah. racers talk about in the early days. But I think it's probably hard to police. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah. this is uh, this is my heartburn medication. Like I have to take it every day. Oh, they go through your bags. Yeah, I but mean, are they going to necessarily like go like open the bottle of pills and like know what's what? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. You're trying to make a show. You want to make sure that there's nobody who's like uh, off the level in a minute or speaking on your show that might be going through symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, you know, if if you can't stop them from putting no dose in their Claritin bottle, mm -hmm. how are you going to stop them from putting like uppers in their Claritin bottle? I, yeah, I don't know. Performance it'd enhancing be, drugs. It'd be a good question to ask some racers that if we ever got the chance to, because I feel like that, uh, like, I think that they would like, okay, here's your approved medication list. But if somebody was going to swap out their approved medication with like something else that like looked the same, like, mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a PA who's like taking every pill in your med kit. But this smacks of like season one of Survivor when BB brought those glasses that were not prescription <laughs> that he could start a fire. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, well, you know, some would argue that, you know, even like in modern day Survivor has had its own struggles with uh, trying to enforce this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it's definitely, Fair. you know, it's definitely a thing on in the, in the CBS reality pantheon. Uh, but I digress. OK, <laughs> so then we were dealing with uh, the teams uh, going and working on the beehives uh, and uh, we had where Joel and Garrett finish and they go and they say their goodbye to Steve and Annalie like we'll never see you again don't say that <laughs> you will um, as sooner than you think Joel and Garrett because they're driving just they mentioned like hey 
You know, our notebook that we write everything in, like they leave and we see like, oh, they've forgotten something. And they're talking about like, oh, hey, you know, our notebook that we write everything in, like, oh, is that that important? Like, hey, we want to win the race. We can't not have it. I went back and I looked, though, and they did seemingly forget a notebook, but also that one of them picks up the clues also, Jess. Yeah, this is a recurring theme for these two. <laughs> They're very they they are definitely the guys that would walk into a room with their glasses on their head being like, has anyone seen my glasses? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it, it's funny to hear them refer to like something like that because you don't hear people talk about it very much. Just the people on, you know, the nerds on podcasts that are like speculating, what do you think the final memory task is going to be? They don't really talk about the final memory task like you know, diegetically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this was incredibly meta because, you know, as was actually, I think, talked about in a piece of ADR on the tray and like, all you basically need is your fanny pack, your bags, and those might not even be necessary and your partner. Like that's what you need uh, to finish a leg of the Amazing Race. I know in some instances you talk about picking up the clues. Sometimes they like make you hand in all the clues that you've done over the course of the leg just to make sure you picked up every one. But this was truly, again, a risk-reward situation. The notebook was not mandatory for them to check in with, but it's something that gives them a significant advantage for the end. We've talked with the past two teams that won, for instance, and I'm sure Will and James were in this category as well, as like meticulously compiling each and everything that they have seen over the course of the race. So you could definitely proceed forward to guarantee yourself to survive elimination, but it comes at this much more long-term cost of like, okay, but you better commit to memory everything that happened in the other seven legs because that information is just gone. Uh, speaking of Joel and Garrett, does anybody call them mustachios besides Steve? I can't decide if that's their team name or that Steve has just given them that name. I think it was just, I think it's just Steve's own internal shorthand. <laughs> well, I think they're like, I've heard that and I've heard the beard bros, both of which are wrong because <laughs> one of them has a mustache. One of them has a beard. <laughs> well, one of them, to be so fair, Mike, they both down. have a mustache. I, just, one of them it, also it, has a beard. It's like a rectangle square situation of like all most beards contain mustaches, but no mustaches contain beards. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, no. Yeah, because he's not he's not rocking an Abraham Lincoln. I think it's important to make the distinction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, but Steve was constantly talking about mustachios here. Uh, do we like mustachios? Kind of rhymes with pistachios. I I mean, to be fair, you knew instantly who he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not so bad. It's effective. Yeah, pretty good branding for Joel I, and Garrett. I, I probably call him like facial hair. Don't care. Because like they, sure. last episode, they're like, we don't really care. We're going to enjoy our time here. Mm -hmm. it doesn't scan as quickly, that's, though. That's like a Linda Holmes nickname. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it would be like you'd be reading a recap and she would exclusively start referring to them as facial hair don't care. And mm -hmm. you'd be like, wait, a oh, okay. Yeah, call them like mm -hmm. FHDC. Yeah. <laughs> the FHDC. All right. So uh, then the teams had to go and go to a spiral staircase, get to the top, get the clue. You could take the elevator down, even though some teams uh, debated whether or not they could. Uh, Look like that Steve and Anna Lee were breaking a rule. They didn't. Uh, and ultimately, at the pit stop, which Phil sets up as like, this town is known for all of its dragons. And can you guess what they call this bridge? Dragon Bridge. <laughs> Phil is really doing some great stuff with awkward transitions in the past couple of episodes between his entire gotcha moment with Joel and Garrett and here, yeah, the seemingly rhetorical question of what do you think this bridge is called? It's called Dragon Bridge. You guessed it. Yeah, and this is not even a case of we've been here so many times we're running out of things. Like the time that Phil announced that Italy is shaped like a boot. <laughs> this is like you got all new, you got all new material here. There is no excuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we learned so much about Slovenia. They have the highest amount of beekeepers per capita. <laughs> yeah, take that. <laughs> so this is like this is on the level of uh, the human head weighs eight pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jonathan Lipnicki would be great. He'd have he'd be like Rob with the NATO facts. He would just commit so much to memory. <laughs> yeah. I, we we didn't spend enough time on. I enjoy reading about NATO <laughs> as a fun fact. Like who who says that? Yeah, 
I don't know. Is that sort of like, you know, the ultimate like uh, dad trope of like history channel? Is that what Rob yeah, is like doing in his pastime? Stephen Ambrose fanboys. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I would say, though, is you don't have to go full Rob at the same time. And this used to be a thing back in the old school days where like people would get atlases of the countries we're traveling to. I mean, especially given last leg when you're given this random factoid of like, what's the date of the oldest cologne in Cologne? Like, I think if you have some downtime between flights, like look up random facts about the country that you're going to. I think the fact that it is like a 32 year old country would be probably a fun fact mm -hmm. that you should commit to memory in case you're asked about it. Yeah, but where are you looking up those fun facts? It's not like you can do it on your phone or anything. Well, I think they offer you like you can stop at like internet cafes in the airport. I'm mm -hmm. sure, or maybe you could. If you have a connection. It. Yeah, you don't really you... have those anymore, though, do you, Mike? I don't know. I feel like uh, maybe if you're you could get into like the frequent flyers lounge somehow sneak your way in there. I'm a, I'm on a TV show. I need to look <laughs> up everything about Slovenia to look up fun facts about, the <laughs> about <country> Slovenia. <laughs> Because it used to be like the airport, you know, in the early days of Amazing Race, there was like a business center where you could mm -hmm. go to like send a fax or dial someone on a landline and you could print out maps from MapQuest and stuff. Mm -hmm. But now I think, well, JFK, they have like, if you go to like one of the bars, they have this kiosk where you can do limited browsing, mm -hmm. but you can't look at everything. Yeah. So I don't know, but it it seems like. You could go into you could go into the newsstand and read books while you're waiting for your flight. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to pull a Joel and Garrett. Okay. But we have seen two episodes in a row where there has been like some sort of numerical solution to a task. Could this be one of the hardest final roadblocks ever where it's like arrange all of these numbers in the order you found them? Hmm possible but we, we've had we've had that kind of task before like season 25 finale with the shipping containers and the yes. numbers so it's it's been done but that is maybe more likely that they do it again so uh, we have a, a pretty exciting like final act where uh we have uh, some questions about who is going to be uh the last team to arrive because uh we're having we're seeing you know uh Steve and Annalie that are out there and Morgan and Elena that they're still uh, struggling with the navigation. Ultimately we see Steve and Annalie check in sixth and they tell Phil it was a bad day and he's like uh he's like okay uh, I feel like he kind of like was setting up like a good news, bad news. I really thought that the way that Phil set this up, that he was going to tell them like, well, the good news is you made it, but the bad news is you have a penalty. Right. Um, but what was the bad news? Uh, it seemed like the bad news is like, you're going to have to keep dealing with each other in stressful <laughs> situations. Evidently, you're going to yeah. keep uh, Jessica Lee's like reaching for her own personal supply of medication with how <laughs> awkward things are getting between the two of you. I totally agree with you, Rob. Like I know Annalise said in the moment, it doesn't say anything in the clue about not taking the elevator, but considering we didn't see anyone else doing it, I was a bit nervous. And here's a little bit of an amazing race hack, though things have changed recently. Phil usually in the past had a script to go off of. If he says you are team number blank, you are safe. If mm. he says you are the blank team to arrive, it will always be followed up with, however, you didn't do this, therefore you will receive a penalty. Again, it's been a little more loosey-goosey as we've experienced in the modern era of The Amazing Race, but usually that was like the key indicator as to whether or not a team checked in without any penalties. Yeah, it, and this is why it was really jarring to like switch over to Canada and Australia where John Montgomery and Bo Ryan just kind of indiscriminately phrase it every single time somebody checks in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, and even Phil has kind of moved away from that in recent times. Maybe because people know. And because he wants to set up bits like, do the best impression of me to the next team that arrives on the mat. <laughs> I thought they were going to tell him to just keep racing uh, because it, that Phil, even the way he said it was like, uh, like the good news is you're still racing. Yeah. Like, I thought he was going to say like, okay, well this is like a mega leg. I'm as, I mean, it doesn't really time out. You know, uh, we have the survivor finale has now been explicitly confirmed as the 20th of December, meaning that amazing race has to finish by the 13th, assumingly if it's going to take up that hour and a half slot. And so I don't think we can have any more mega legs for the rest of the race, but the way it was timing out Considering that we had teams check in with like eight minutes of the episode left, I agree. And I, it seemed like I was a bit surprised when they climbed to the top of the skyscraper and it was just go to the pit stop. I thought it was going to be, hey, keep on going. And they were mm -hmm. just going to 
squash both Slovenia legs together. Let's talk about how the individual teams did. And let's talk about our first place team, uh, Greg and John. And Greg and John, it's it's starting to be a thing. Getting yeah. a little a little dominant. Uh, how many legs in a row now? Is this three in a row first place finish? That's the hat, hat trick. trick. And what's interesting is... Yeah. In honor just, of uh, the time of year. And they're going to have a great family dinner. They're going to talk about now their new trip to Namibia as well, which is an awesome destination. And of uh, course, you cannot say Namibia. Thanks to the amazing race. Yes. For 22 years, I've not been able to say Namibia without adding jackass onto the end of it. <laughs> yeah, that was the, from the very first episode of the amazing race. Uh, it's mm -hmm. quite the throwback. But yeah, look at these guys. Like people were worrying about Steve and Anna Lee. These were the guys that you should be worried about. Something that I thought was interesting was when they talk about them trying to overtake Rob and Corey on the stairs, they talked about like how athletic they are. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's not something that's necessarily been focused on. They've been much more brain than brawn. But considering that is obviously a detail that is paying off for them, they might low key be the team, or even not even low key at this point. They've won three legs in a row. They are definitely the team to beat at this point. Their only weakness? Hey. <laughs> Yeah, but they've got a fever, and the only prescription is <laughs> clarity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they really don't have a big blind spot the way that a lot of these other teams do. Yeah, like they are pretty decent at navigation. Uh, yeah, they are great at the tasks. Well, it's... how did they struggle when they ended up the, the the two weeks that they came in eighth place? What was what was the the things that they really were struggling with? So it was the floating market task in Vietnam. Yeah. And remember that like with and then after that, like remember the fourth leg was like a bit of a cluster F because everyone got bogged up at that final needle in a haystack. Right. Speaking no, of hay, don't say road, haystack. Yeah, a uh, roadblock. And so I think. I wouldn't say it was crap shooty, but that was definitely like one or two things going wrong that seemingly were kind of out of mm -hmm. their control in comparison to, as Jess said, like there really hasn't been a task that they've faltered on that really fell on their own skill set. Okay. Um, well, they're doing great. Uh, people are starting to be like, uh, they're on the radar, but I don't think people are like disliking them. The likable guys. Yeah, I think that's also why people aren't thinking of them as the team to beat, because it's like these guys are fun to hang out with. Yeah, they're not being like the classic like dude bros, like just uh, leaving everybody in the dust. So I think that they're well liked among the teams. And so let's see if they continue to do well uh, next week in Slovenia. All right. Todd and Ashley uh, really have rounded into form. Uh, they have been sort of middle of the pack most of the race. But they're like basically like 15 seconds behind first place in this episode. I mean, I I might I might say these this team is my winner pick. Wow, okay. interesting. I mean, you think I, you think this is like the Joey and Kelsey we've never gotten first until it matters most? I think they're so solid. And this is another team that doesn't really they haven't really hit something that they really can't get around. They've never been in serious trouble. And just the few, like, very smart things we've seen them do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where I am worried is what we saw this week and seemingly what we see a little bit of next week, which is when the killer fatigue sets in, even the most solid relationships can break down. And I know we got that sort of soundbite a couple of weeks ago about, like, oh, he knows how to get on my nerves, but I love him. I could worry that perhaps they get a bit too bickery. We lost one of the most bickering teams in Morgan and Lena. Could Todd and Ashley <laughs> step up in their stead? <laughs> the they do course. bicker, but it's more like they bicker in like a very couples therapy kind of way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like they, they are doing it. Productive. They, I think they practiced bickering before they got out here. Wow. I think they might have gotten a mediator and like figured out exactly how they need to talk to each other. Yeah. They've talked about how they've been to therapy and they've, yeah. you know, they've come out of it stronger. And you can hear that in the way they phrase the things they say to each other. Well, that sounds incredible. I would love that. Um, <laughs> all right. On the amazing race, Rob. <laughs> all right. Um, then uh, team number three is Rob and Corey. And uh, 
they're so fun to watch. And this is like, uh, you know, dad and son goals, Rob and Corey. Oh, it was that... such a cute moment when like Rob put his hat on Corey when he was going up in the glider. Like that was like a quintessential father son moment. But the big to do for them this leg, they got the second express pass, which is only good. This was leg eight. It's only good for the next two legs. So mm -hmm. I'll be intrigued to see, especially compared to Morgan and Lena, how they're going to use theirs. Yeah. And, um, Rob is a big NATO guy. <laughs> it is such a dad thing. If they ever come in first place, like he should win the ticket to 10 G6 or something. Yeah. Um, Corey, hope he's doing also uh, doing well with his battle with the hay fever. Uh, the, you know, they seem like they were really like uh, leading the pack on trying to pull off that big move with the trains. Ultimately, uh, that didn't go through, but it was exciting to have. Yeah, they should have called the should have called the detour hives or hives. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other one. <laughs> okay, so Rob and Corey uh still right there. Uh Joel and Garrett, it was looking a little dicey, especially that they keep forgetting stuff. Um, and then ultimately they were in first place at one point early on in the race before Garrett thought Slovenia was founded in 1199. Yeah, I I'm I'm starting to like not sour on them certainly as people. Again, I love them. I think they're my favorite team left in the race. I'm starting to worry about their chances a bit because as Anna Lee opined to the wind, you're at seven teams left. You know, only a couple of crucial errors can put you in last place. And we've seen the past couple legs that yes, Joel and Garrett have had opportunities to catch up, but they found opportunities to also fall back. Again, last time it was getting so lost in Joel with the locks. This time it was Garrett with the roadblock and leaving something behind. I worry that we're being set up for like, they're getting more frazzled despite their easygoing nature. And like with such limited wiggle room as the teams winnow down, that could be enough to send them out. Yeah. You know, okay. we talk about how the exciting, amazing race legs are the ones where the teams switch up the order all the time. I think Joel and Garrett are really doing their part to keep it exciting. <laughs> <laughs> They bring a lot of variance to the amazing race. Okay. Uh, Robin and Chelsea. And I feel like they had kind of a quiet week overall. Um, but, you know, they're still out there. They're still a formidable team. Did you like John and Greg being able to shake their tail for one second where Robin and Chelsea followed them yet again out of the roadblock? And they're like, okay, we need to get, I don't care if we don't have directions. We're getting out of here as soon as possible so these damn people don't follow us to the detour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, uh, uh, are they the villains of the Amazing Race 35? Insofar as we have villains, I think mm -hmm, they are yeah. being set up to be them. But it's also like based on things we have heard in exit interviews, it's like they might be getting a good at it. Oh, I mean, it's yeah, it seems like they've been like doing some low key shady stuff yeah. that makes more sense as to why they were nearly U turned, despite the fact that they were in like third to last place during that leg. Yeah, the yeah. betrayal is more like, oh, the other teams don't like us, not, you know, we didn't come here to make friends and we're going to step on everybody on our way to the top. Yeah. They're in purple. They're a little bit like Team Wario. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now that's the mustachios. <laughs> that's the mustachios. Okay. Uh, for. Robert and Chelsea, anything else about their rate leg of the race that we didn't highlight today? I mean, as shady as they were to Todd and Ashley, shady on John's part to be like, oh, looks like they're capable of independent thought. Like, I understand that if they were frustrated <laughs> that they've been drifting behind them for the entirety of two legs, but like shady, shady thing to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, there's one thing. It's one thing if you don't want to work with the other teams, but it's another thing if you are working with the other teams without their permission. Yeah. All right. Steve and Annalie, boy, I really expected them to bounce back after last week. Uh, and it was a struggle um, that are, are Steve and Annalie, are, are they circling the drain or are they in a slump? I mean, listen, if we're continuing in Slovenia, if we're continuing in Europe, we're going to see more self-driving. That is inherently not good for Steve and Annalie. They were only able to survive because they beat out the other team that was the only one arguably worse at them than self-driving mm -hmm. over the course of this race. But they have shown themselves to be incredibly competent at the task themselves. Like by far their biggest issues is getting there. I do have some similar like Joel and Garrett feelings of like, that might not make up for it if you're still making these crucial errors in transit. They need to pull the Robin and Chelsea. They need to be the ones to be like, okay, who's ahead of us? I don't care where they're going. I'm following them because chances are I can beat them in the tasks. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, we've seen both of them like uh, hit low lows in the last couple episodes. I am hoping for Steve and Annalie to bounce back. I was happy that Steve was able to complete the task on the first try. I was like, yes, come on, Steve, come through. <laughs> you did it. Uh, so good to have for Steve to have a moment along this leg of the amazing race on maybe a down week for Annalie. And I do hope that they can uh, pull it together coming through in the next week. And then Morgan and Lena, uh, we'll talk to them in our exit press coming up on Thursday. But that being said, uh, it was a fun ride. Oh, incredible. Jess, were you feeling that PSB, the personal story bump when they talk about their cousin? Yeah. Yeah, that that seemed like such an unrelated piece of information. I I mean, I understand the, the family bond, and but to paint it as their driving force that they had a cousin who was... Like they're doing this for their cousin. It felt like it was a little shoehorned in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm happy that they have this chance to, you know, experience the world and show it to her, but it didn't feel, it felt like at this juncture, this was the only reason you would be telling that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the struggle for them really came in the form of navigation. We saw last week, uh, it was a real a hard uh, time for them to get from place to place. And, uh, it really wasn't the task so much. Uh, I mean, we saw, we saw Lena struggling with, uh, trying to get the dates, but that didn't seem like that was ultimately the nail in their coffin. No, they left. I think the, the nail in the, Dracula's coffin. <laughs> uh, that's that's in, Ivan to you. Thank you very Sorry. much. Uh, but they, yeah, they left the detour. I think in like fourth place, right? Mm -hmm. So it really just came down to, I guess is self driving the puzzle of the Amazing Race as puzzles. The great are equalizer. Survivors. Yeah, it's the great equalizer. We're like, you can, especially this season has proven like you can really catch up if other people struggle. I love Morgan and Lena. They were by far the hot mess team of this season. From things of just like. Uh, we're waiting too long in line for fruit. Let's use our express pass to just like, even when they're doing well, consistently arguing with each other. It's interesting that they left this race being like, we figured out how to communicate better with each other. And it's like, really? <laughs> this, maybe you just learned how to communicate with each other in general, but at least Lena learned the difference between left and right in this leg. Okay. All right, and that's uh, where we will leave it for episode number eight of The Amazing Race. Uh, it was another standout, so a uh, really, really fun night on The Amazing Race. Looking forward to what happens uh, coming up next week on our Thanksgiving week of The Amazing Race. Uh, Jess, what else is coming up for you? Uh, well, over on Post Show Recaps, we have one more podcast and two more episodes of Fear the Walking Dead Ooh. forever. Oh, my God. I am, and Rob, we almost we almost decided we were going to make you come in and watch those last two episodes with us. Okay, just let because... me just let me check with Sam and see if I can do it. And Sam's going to tell you you have other things going on. Because <laughs> really, oh no, Sam said no. On. Too yeah. bad, Sam, you jerk. <laughs> you never let Rob do anything fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. um but yeah. we're we're getting through it. It's one more episode, and then we are done. And I then am really curious. You know, it might be worth visiting when you have a little more free time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I am going to be dropping by Silent Podcasts next week uh, to talk Amazing Race with the Amazing Race Australia podcasters over there, including the great Sarah Carradine. And she's asked me to drop by and provide a little expertise on the game format. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll get caught up with all 83 episodes <laughs> of Amazing Race Australia before then, but I do know how it ends and it ends really super weirdly. So that will be fun mm. to talk about. Rob can okay. catch you up because George was on that and he's required by law to watch anything oh, that George is on. Okay. Well, now 83 episodes sounds very interesting for hey. all the George content. Yeah, it's a lot of George content. Maybe okay. this is the intro that my son needs to become an Amazing Race super fan. Mm -hmm. He just There's needs a George. George. George yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Jess, great job. Uh, today, we'll be back with our exit interview tomorrow. Mike, what else is coming up for you? 
So I'll have my exit interview with Morgan and Lena, as well as the most recent boot from Survivor after that electric episode. And uh, if you missed it, Big Brother finale was this past week. I was burning the midnight oil. Probably need to take my own form of no-dos that night to talk with all final three and America's favorite house guests, of course, covering BSG and Boring. Fargo upcoming as well on Post Show Recaps. But I want to bring it back to CBS Reality because let's end with job security, folks. Let's talk about that this week. It was announced that Survivor 46 and The Amazing Race 36 <laughs> coming back this spring. The Amazing Race 36 premiering March 13th, and they're sticking with 90-minute episodes. Okay. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's interesting uh, because for people that might not remember, uh, the 35th season that we're watching here was not the 30th or 35th season that filmed. Basically, this was produced specifically with 90-minute episodes in mind. The 36th season, which will be the one that it was swapped for, was not. Uh, so I think we can look at the first couple of legs of this season as perhaps proof as to what that's going to look like the entirety of season 36, where like less tasks and just more sort of focus on the teams. So I'll be intrigued to see how much that formula copies over to the spring. But yeah, I know we're we're done in less than a month here, but we'll be back in March to do it all again. All right. Well, fun stuff. Uh, this was great. First to see both of you in New York this week. That was a really fun time. Uh, got to take a cool picture also. So uh, glad to get together uh, for a little bit uh, around the Survivor episode of this week. Be sure to check out all of our coverage of that. And then uh, check out the Amazing Race exit interview and everything else we're doing over at Rob's website.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.